Welcome, everybody. It's episode four. Yeah, episode four of the Sandbag Show. Welcome, and uh, let's get to it. What's up, you beautiful people? Gosh, podcast four. We're in it today. We're in it. We're deep in. Oh, yeah. Finally got it. It feels better every time, boys. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. I feel you. I feel you. We're getting, what, this is uh, second week of July, I think. I don't know. We're getting into it. We got a lot of things on the uh, the schedule, I think. What, what have you been doing so far this week? You've been doing a lot. Uh, yeah. Uh, this week, I started my new job. Um, not Red Lobster. Yeah, no. Not Red Lobster. Why would... Duh. Jeez. Anyway, I started my <laughs> new physical labor job. It's the first one I've ever had that's like, you know, like... Like, you gotta, like, you're in the sun and blah, 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 blah. Like, it's not like in a building, Red Lobster. My only jobs I've ever had is like cleaning, Red Lobster, and Subway. Okay. So you've had air conditioning? Yeah, in all of them. Okay. Um, and. So what are you doing? Uh, um, oh, yeah, I'm a commercial painter. Um, wow. Stepping yeah. up in the world. Uh, well, I guess tech, I'm self employed technically. We're doing. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah. You're, we're doing like a self contractor. Is that what they call it? I'm working uh, for a company. It's okay. <laughs> it's whatever. whatever. Um, we're doing residential right now. It's just commercial painter sounds a lot cooler. Like, Facts. Like, no. yo, what do you do? I'm a commercial painter. It just yeah. sounds way cooler. Uh, it's just been better than, hey, I'm a lobster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about as rough as I'd expect it to. So it's not like it's not like I went out there like, this is going to be easy. And then got like, it blew up in my face. And I was like, why is it so hard? It's like I knew it was going to be hard. But yeah, that's the whole song. You're just it's, now it's, feeling it's it. hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. A lot of squats, man. A lot of just <laughs> squats. Baseboards, baby. What's what's hurting the most? My knees. Your knees? Yeah, I'm 18 years old and my knees hurt. <laughs> your knees hurt and you're squatting? Yes. You, you got a bad squat. Well, they're not like, I'm not like squatting. <laughs> nah, <laughs> like, dude, you need to be squatting. Do I'm you like got a good deep squat? Bending down. How good is your deep squat? Do we need to show people your deep squat right I now? I would rather not because you just said it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Nah, man, like if you have good like squat posture. Yo, when you're doing a squat, make sure, especially a weighted squat, it's not a like squat. make sure you got good posture, or else you will ruin yourself. I know, I know, but it's like <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm doing that. You know that little, you know that squat thing when they say pop a squat and you're like on all your weights on your ankles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I'm doing. It's not like I'm like going down and getting the baseboard and coming back up. It's like I'm just going down. I'm be, I've been puttying. Okay. Yeah, it's rough. You should get some of those knee braces and just be on your knees. Or I should just. Deal with it. Yeah. Or stretch. Stretch. Yeah. Work out. Feel better. Like. Oh, is this like the podcast that we did like last week? Maybe. Were you not there for that? We did physical fitness. Oh yeah, I was there for that. Yeah. Was it, was it last one? Maybe it was the. I don't even know. We've, we've talked. Got, we've talked we've about had physical four fitness. podcasts. <laughs> I can't keep track. <laughs> we've talked about physical fitness, and I definitely I need to get back on routine. I've been moving into my house and stuff, and it's just been. It's no excuse. It's no blah, 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 blah. You've I been moving it. in for like a month now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not. What, okay, so what do you still not have in your house? I don't have a stove. I don't have the rest of my cabinets that are supposed to be put in. My AC, like the AC unit in the house, I'm renting the, um, it's a basement apartment. So it's the full downstairs of somebody's yep. house. No windows, super creepy. I love it. Got I, it. I, that's what, it's actually, it's ironic you said no windows. I don't know if you've mentioned it before. We talk a lot. But everybody that I've told them living in a basement, everybody that like I'm asking for opinions, like yo, they're like, so do you have any windows? And when I say no, they're like, oh, no. I'll say windows. this though, like when you got like a crap ton of like natural light in your house, it's nice. It's I just bougie. I just like, I don't know, man. It, you just feel better. I'm just one of those people, man. Like I just I genuinely, I guess, once I live in this house for long enough, and uh. I don't have windows for a while, and yeah. then I live somewhere that has windows. That if I sense. feel better, then maybe I'll be like, wow, this was affecting me in ways I didn't know. But as of now, it, it, has, n it has no obvious negative effect to my mood or anything of the sorts. Like, I, I feel the same way like in my – you've seen my room. Yeah. Um, it's like the, ups, this, like the bonus room because all of my siblings have moved out. They're all older than I am. And it's like the bonus room like above the garage. So technically like I have a garage-sized room, and then like it's I have massive. one – Yeah, I have one – window but it's broken you know you've seen it yeah and it's like disgusting because there's water in it and i just put the blinds over yeah so like my natural light is garbage, garbage. you yeah. don't have natural light no 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 and N natural light natural light natty light 
<laughs> it's a beer. That was a bad reference. <laughs> no, just, when you said, like, I don't have any natural lot, like, it just made me seem like you were complaining, like, man, I don't have any natty lot. Where's that natty lot? <laughs> okay, here's the thing. People who drink beer, please, God, like, uh, you got to have a better, got to have a better sense of, like, taste. I or just like. tell me why. Like, if you look at me like, I drink beer because I like it, then I'll be like, oh, cool for you. But everybody who drinks beer, they're like, I don't know. And I don't know why I drink you, it. You just have those those trash people. Okay, maybe they're not trash people. Well, but Kendall. What? I don't know. It's just like a common denominator where you just drink like cheap beer. It's bad. Yeah, Natty Light those, specifically. It's one of those things where it's like they're not trash people. You're not calling them trash. You're calling their habits trash, and you know that they could do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like it's you're like not. You're not. Wait, if you drink, beer. if you drink a ton of beer, you're not saying, and you say like whatever, like you just said, like a trash person. You're not saying like you. I don't like you. You're saying no. Like, it's you make like, bad decisions, and I. That's I, you a could that's do a poor decision for sure. Either way, um. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've lost my train of thought here. This week, uh, I'm prepping for band camp for the high school that I'm teaching, which is technically our old high school. Uh, got in there teaching, which is really nice. It is really nice. Um, facts. Granted, we're going to have band camp, whatever that looks like, with today or the world's current events, you know. Um, so I'm prepping for next week. And you know the asphalt field that we have? We have yeah. an asphalt field at that high school. Garbage. One. If you are ever planning to, like, renovate a school or give the band something or you're starting a school, do not have an asphalt field ever. Just give them a big patch of grass. They can paint fields. They can learn how to paint fields, but don't give an asphalt field. Unless you're hardcore because – Not I even s- hardcore. Dude, it's like – The asphalt field sucked. Like, my feet hurt. Like, it just like standing on hard ground didn't not even feel that. as good as grass. It, it just ruins what – marching is because you're you're not calibrated to what you're going to march on like 99 percent of the time yeah, yeah, yeah i get what you're saying in that point but the point i was trying to make is like marching on the on the concrete asphalt it was like it would actually make like your feet hurt more than on grass obviously it, it, and it then would, when i would march on grass it would feel like like feathers like it was but the only thing it doesn't prepare you for is grass like yeah. the texture how your feet move if How your the density of your body? It's it's very very it's a nuanced thing and it's very weird. In a perfect world, you could have both if you wanted, I guess. Because you do no no no, just have a yeah. turf field and then you a track around it. You definitely need to like march because I will I can I can remember marching on asphalt and then grass for the first time. Like it's just completely it's a different feel. Yes, like yes. your steps feel different. Yep. Like over the summer, we had a whole college campus to use, and we would never practice drill on asphalt ever. But we would track on asphalt. Um, a lot of times awesome. we would like literally just use the roads. We'd get in a block, and uh, <laughs> our techs were terrible. They would like uh, they would make us like drill like three measures, and we just r- repeat it on a loop as we marched. It was awful, especially like. Uh, do you remember last year's show where we just had like this like trilling ish part? It was like straight sixteenth notes for mellophones. It was like very. It was like in the background ish. I don't know if you remember that. I slept since then. <laughs> it was it was bad, Twice. and to like do that on repeat for like ever until they're like, yeah, all right, fine, you're or dead enough <laughs> to do anything on repeat for like ever. Tracking tracking is really good. Like if you are prepping, especially for drumline, just because they are the heart of you know time, the pulse. Yes, very much so. Uh, tracking for drumline is just a standard, honestly. But get your brass, get your woodwinds out there. Uh, track some stuff like for parades for sure but also just like in general it just it the excuse me i've had an energy drink it's just like jack me up um <laughs> the uh this man had v8 sparkling water <laughs> no 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 it's juice it's okay i've had this every podcast he's over like v8 I just drank two monsters <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> boys judging me <laughs> anyways tracking so are they kindle so are they you know what <laughs> you know what Keep going. Tracking's good. Whatever. I'm not even going to finish my point. Tracking's good. Do it for everybody. It's not just for drumline. Any um, any core, anybody who's in a core that uh, doesn't track, like their core doesn't track or yeah. whatever regularly, or maybe they do when they can, or they don't make it a point, and you just said, like, tracking is an essential for cores, they're looking at themselves like, dang. <laughs> I'm well, not like, the blue coats. Again, let's be real here. Like, world class. Let, let's be real. Like, who's going to take? actual advice from this podcast that's why we're here we're here for actual <laughs> marching advice you should we, come to us we, as okay. sixth graders to prepare we're like that uh uh 
we're, we're like that uncle who like is like half drunk and then talks conspiracies all the time <laughs> and like you just like have to cut out a lot of what he says to get to like the points that he's actually trying to make that yep. are kind of okay i, that, I can that's that's, that's, that. wh- that's who we are that's that's a that's a fair a point. fair point. <laughs> like my brother, I you can't, know, I can't argue. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. So, uh, the asphalt field that we're on, it's okay. We have uh, yard lines from twenty to twenty because our band's kind of small and we don't really reach. We like to have very front and center just because of our size. And if we were to expand to that size, we don't have a lot of drum majors. It's just spacing issues, timing. We're just not there. And we also don't compete. It's it's more for ratings and Friday Night Lights, that kind of deal. Yep. Definitely. So we have an asphalt field that is from the 20-yard line to the 20-yard line. We don't have an actual football field that's asphalt. Um, I never knew this when I was in high school because I was in this high school. And when I got to drum corps, it was like the biggest it, – it weirded me out. But, like, the the – we call them ticks, tick marks. Um the yard line markers, like not just the numbers, but like the in betweens. Yeah, that's standard. You need to know how to read those as a marcher. I never knew that. I knew that they were standard on like football fields. Yes, that that made sense. But I just thought because they don't line up with the eight to five grid. Yeah. And so I just thought, oh, okay, well, don't pay attention to them. Yeah. Just memorize your dots. Yeah. No, there's a way to read them. And I was like, what? And people showed me this graph, and I was like. I'm in a, a world class drum corps and I'm supposed to be able to read this stuff and I don't. Yeah. That's why it was a big so we don't have them and so I'm spending like the next or the past like three days like just spray painting them. <laughs> just putting them in. I got like stencils from the football crew and I'm just taking like spray paint and just Speaking putting them on. Of spray paint. I spray painted something for the very first time. Today actually. Um You've never spray painted? I've never even held a bottle of spray. For the things paint. that we've done, I'm yeah. surprised we didn't hold spray paint. Actually, I remember one time where we were somewhere we were not supposed to be. Yeah. That I spray painted something that I was not supposed to spray paint. You can tell me later. Can you say it on the show? I think so. I'm going to say it. We had snuck into the Playboy Mansion before it got turned torn down. And oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. It, was, it wasn't Playboy. It was like this rich man who had like the Playboy symbol. Yeah, I think pool. it was like once Playboy bought by somebody else. Yeah. I, I don't know. We just snuck into it because we heard it was tearing down, and a lot of people snuck into it. And We, I, we yeah. actually didn't know, but like they have like a uh, um, – a watch on it like people call in and make sure that no one goes in there like apparently oh it's gone now well yeah it's 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 gone gone but i didn't realize you spray painted in there oh, oh well you were talking about spray paint yeah so <laughs> i spray painted i spray painted actually for the first time like not just like yo uh okay. like you know trying to get yeah, everywhere using it for, you, the, for real you know not like too thick and whatever yep and i did pretty good uh i've been like i don't know i like to think that i have common sense so, like, I just, like, looked up a video, followed the video. I was, yeah. I was chill. But the best part, best part, was afterwards, it was me and my girlfriend who were doing it. And we get, we go inside, and we're, like, ma- like kind of on the counter, just, like, doing something. She was, like, feeding the dog, and I was, like, getting something ready uh, to come here. And we, like, look at each other, and we just have this black tint just over, because it was black spray paint, just over our entire face uh. and arms. <laughs> and, like, we hadn't noticed. And I'm like, you look like a dude. Like, you got a mustache. <laughs> and it was just so bad. And we're in the, like, in the shower. Well, she's in she's in the shower. I'm at the sink with, like, loofahs just, like, on oh, our loofahs. face. Because I'm like, I got a podcast, man. It's going to mess with the lights. <laughs> it was terrible. I got to look okay. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I had, like, the completed unibrow. I don't even know. Like, it just you happened. Just, you had everything. It was really bad. It was, like, a black tent. If Dang. I would have went out in public, man, like I would have been like called racist or something. It was What's crazy. funny is that like we uh, like in drum corps, we sometimes spray spray paint forms, and so like if we have this big massive arc yeah. that we ju- we don't want to mess up. It, yeah, it changes a lot, and then also just like how fast paced our drill is, and then how much we have to put on. A lot of times, like that arc can be moved a little and like shimmied to where it's not exact. But it looks good. Yeah. As far as like, as long as you're fitting the form, it doesn't matter what your drill is. Yeah. That kind of thing. And they would literally just like one staff member would like hunch over with a can of spray paint and you just run and spray paint like people's shoes. <laughs> like I had like a racing stripe on my shoe the whole summer, and it was just because like they were they told us to move our feet, but like we didn't. How fast? We were how fast was he running? 
Okay, there were some people that were getting it. I was about to say because they were getting it. I'd be getting it, dude. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They told them to move their shoes, but if I come fast enough, they they won't have the time. Yeah, our uh, <laughs> our now our new visual caption head, uh, jeez, dude, he ran all the time, like to spray paint all the forms. He was just like zooming, but like, okay, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had this because you know you've only done marching band, and we didn't have that many techs in high school. We had like maybe one that did, like, music and stuff, you know? Um, but there's, like, field techs for drum corps. Yes. They are on the field watching moves. They'll give hints as we're doing stuff. They're a field tech. Yeah, exactly. Jared, our, he was he was basically uh, our co-caption head. He would be on the ground sometimes, and the way he would fix circles or, like, moving circles yeah. is he'd literally just jump in. And as we were moving drill, he'd just be like back up, back up, back up, and he'd like he'd like do this, <laughs> and it was like so weird. And like you'd see him, and you'd get scared. Like he'd just yeah. zoom in, and you're like, was that like a rabid animal? Like what? <laughs> what's going on? And like honestly, I'm surprised he didn't get knocked over, or like he just hurt somebody. But and and that man's like he's not like a stick, but he isn't like big. Like he's just an average dude. He's a homie. And so like. We had some tight intervals, and the fact that like he just snuck in and just, was fixing the form from the inside—it it was dumb, dude. It reminds it me dumb. of that. It reminds me of that video of the revolving door. You got like this skinny, like white guy in front of it with like I think he had like no shirt on. He just starts spinning it like really, really fast. Oh, didn't he try to like jump in? No, no, no. He successfully jumps in and gets through, and then his buddy uh, buddy comes up behind him, and the other guy spinning it from the other side. His buddy jumps in and like it didn't even look like he was trying. Like only his arm gets in and he takes it and once it smashes, oh. he like takes his hand out and all you can see is just blood everywhere. No. So I could just imagine, ah. <laughs> just imagine. Uh, I couldn't remember his name, but the caption head just like jumping in and just <laughs> collision. <laughs> just like, uh. well, here's the thing. Like he was zooming <laughs> and like I don't know how that man moved that fast. Like and again, it's he's all about like timing, baby. average dude, average age, like you know, forty, fifty, maybe. Like he's not like young spry and like an athlete you gotta think he has but fun. he was zooming dude you, you gotta think he has fun with it right like okay and oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing like he taught while he did that and i was like how are you paying attention to like 90 percent of what's going on if you're fixing this one form that is he did it though he did it Amen. he was he was a god it was it was stupid almost jared dude shout out to jared almost made a terrible joke uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, we, I'm gonna make it. I'm, I'm gonna make it now. But just knowing that it's a joke, I just uh, it, well, it's we not. We could skip it. It's not terrible in that sense. You were, you were saying like he did it. He did it. And I was just gonna be like, you know, still, still got second though. <laughs> <laughs> still got second. L, L. We did, we did. Um, I'm trying to think. There's actually a, a a Jared fan club. Like there's this uh like <laughs> that like that Jared. Yes, that Jared. <laughs> There's uh, a member of our core that made an Instagram page, and it was the Jared Huntley fan page. That's awesome. Um, or fan club. You can look at it on Instagram. It's still up. And he would just take pictures of Jared, unbeknownst to him, and would put, like, really stalker-esque, like, mess- <laughs> like captions of, like, I saw Jared today, and he said hi to me. Like, that weird <laughs> stuff. And, like, we showed Jared, and Jared thought it was hilarious. It's pretty funny. And we went, like, the whole year, and finally, like, uh, the guy who made it was like, hey, that was me. And Jared was like, what? And then I guess it's going to be passed down because he passed it to someone else, and they're still doing it, and he aged out. So Glad Jared's a good guy, man. Yeah, he, no, Jared's he's, great. He's a good sport. He came <laughs> – uh, funny drum core humor. Uh, he came from BD, and so he was a visual caption head at Blue Devils, huh? came to us. This was finals week. It was finals week. We're, like, getting ready. That he came to you? No, 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 no. That, that, like, I'm just saying, like, okay. this funny incident happened finals week. Yeah, yeah, And he's trying to hype us up. He's trying to get us in this zone of, like, he's he's coming from the heart. He's being super emotional, and he's like, He's like, guys, he's like, guys, you know, you guys are amazing, blah, blah, blah. He's telling us all this, and he's like, you know, how far we've come, the show oh, yeah. that we've done, blah, 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 telling us all the stuff. And he's like, I'm, I'm proud to be with you guys, you know? So I love, you. I, I love you, Blue Devils. And we were like, what? What? Excuse me? Did he, did he really say <laughs> he that? He said Blue Devils. <laughs> like on purpose? No, no, no. It was just, it's a slip of the tongue. And we were like, thanks, Jared. Yeah, it was really funny. I... And and here's the thing. I don't know how I feel about that. Well, no, no. Because he's such a good dude, he right. was just like, oops. Right. <laughs> and just laughed it off. Never mind. I guess 
I guess throughout the entire yeah, tour, you just, build a relationship with this fella. Yeah, and we, I don't know, it was really funny. I just said fella for the first time in years. Fella? You know, you don't say fella? No, I don't say fella. Mm, well, all right. Well, anyways, with, uh, I don't think I'll be spray painting high school kids' shoes, um, but I did spray paint the field. They, they would care too much. They'd be like, dude. Well, on. also, like. I got these from Payless. <laughs> It was a it was a two for one. It was bogo, a buy one get guys. one twenty for twenty five percent off, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Do high school kids have money? I had a I had a little bit of money, like I, just because I worked a lot. I but had I in, I never bought in good middle shoes. school. I had great money. Do you? Here's the thing. Do you? Did you ever like march with good shoes, like quality shoes? No. Yeah, you never did. No. No. My. It's a small sob story, but my freshman <laughs> year, I marched. I marched like no, freshman year. It was freshman or sophomore year. I don't know. Uh, I marched um, with throughout the entire season, throughout all of the practices. You had a hole. I right? had my shoes were falling apart. Like I could, <laughs> I could like open up the bottom and the top and like talk with it or whatever. And uh, <laughs> um, that's how you describe it. I just that's just how they were. And I bought those shoes. They were the most expensive shoes I'd ever had at that point, and they were forty five dollars. And okay, big money. I was, I didn't want to let them go. I, they were, I was hyped. They were Vans. I was like, ooh, they were the, they were the you best. Marched with Vans. They were the best. Well, just in practices and stuff. And they were athletic Vans. They weren't like whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were like for sport or whatever. Um, that doesn't exist. But okay. What? Keep going. Like keep going. Sneakers. Anyway. Keep going. Anyway. Um, I just said I never marched with good shoes. Anyway. <laughs> um, it was actually really awesome. Uh, we went to Universal and obviously. When I was at Universal, I walked <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was wearing those shoes. And after Universal, uh, a band mom had just gave me, like, the most expensive, nicest pairs of shoes I'd, I've ever owned. Like, not to this day because I have a job well, yeah, and stuff yeah, now. Yeah, but, like, but like, at the time, they were they were so nice. They were, like, Nike and stuff. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, I saw you walking, walking at, like, Universal. And, like, I just wish I could have given you these <laughs> at Universal. Yeah. God. It was awesome. Wow. It was awesome of her. I'm not crying for you, though. That I was a story. I wouldn't cry for me either. <laughs> I deserved yeah. those shoes. I deserved <laughs> those shoes. Jeez, dude. What is funny, I uh, I don't know, spray painting all of that, the one, I screwed up. I spray painted an extra line. Uh, yard lines every three feet because yards, you know. Yards. Math. And <laughs> the beginning of, like, the tape measure I was using was messed up. So I started at, like, the one foot mark. And I was just going to do math in my head. I should have just started at the three foot mark. And then that way I could still use every number divisible by three. And that would be the yard line. Well, I didn't. I wasn't thinking. And I uh, messed up. And so now there's two extra yard lines between uh, or on the 50. So. Well, we went from not having them to now having two extra. Let's go, champ. Yeah, facts. Facts. <laughs> That's an upgrade. That's an upgrade. <laughs> so literally. In- improvement. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to black it out with black spray paint <laughs> because the field's black. But because the field is, like, aged and it doesn't look solid black, that's going to be weird. Oh, yeah. And so I'm going to go to the other side of the 50 and spray paint another <laughs> black spot. <laughs> no, 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 no. You need to spray paint a white and then a black yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. just, to, just to make it good. Uh, I don't, know. I don't the, know why they let me do the this The exact stuff, same shade of, of black, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they let you do that like you asked? Well, yeah. Again, like I honestly thought that you were like they needed him. I'm out here. Let's go. <laughs> well, I was thinking that way, uh, and I was like, "Yo, hey, can we do this?" And he was like, "Yeah, sure. I mean, like, if we need him, let's do it." Yeah. And it's like, why would he not? Yeah. You're offering exactly. And with everything that's going on, plus like the fact that like we're not good. We struggled a lot to get the asphalt like repaved, and yeah. they didn't even they didn't even repave. There was it. they didn't even like fix the problems that we specifically were like no they just like well, there's we they fixed some of them for sure but there was like this hill like an actual hill on our practice field like on i think it was on and and they created that with the pavement and crazy. i was like what do you expect us to do bro so again i was like they're not gonna give us money to paint it nah so i was just like well what kind of spray paint do you have i'll just i'll just put that stuff on spray paint's it. pretty cheap yeah relatively I, I spray painted for the first time today and i've got Four, five. I got six bottles of spray paint total, and it was only like what thirty five bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Better than uh, a can of paint for sure. Definitely, definitely better than a can of paint. But a can of paint will much more surface. Yeah, if you know how to use it. Facts. This is why you come to the Sandbag Show. Talk about paint and uh, useful woodworking tools. (laughs) 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 Okay, so 
on the subject of messing up, um, for me, when I was in drum corps, I was super ignorant and, and just naive. I had never been in drum corps, and I had just made a top, like, world-class core, and it was like I had a lot of stuff to learn. Plus, I didn't come from a band that was big. We didn't do a lot of competitions. If we did, it was for ratings. It was like a festival type. You didn't go to compete. Yeah, you, it wasn't like first place, second place, nope. third place. We never had props. We never had like a, a theme to our show. We didn't change uniforms. Well, we did, but it was it, it wasn't like a, a concept. You know. Yeah, it was just like it was these, just songs put yeah, together. These songs are in the same genre. Yeah, and I get what you're saying. The way we marched was very much like you memorize your dots, you get to your dots. Oh I yeah. Never. We never really had like a super high level. As, as far as marching goes, super yeah. high level marching, we just had like knowledge from previous years and we had a good high school band and we would get, I don't know, it was for Friday night, excuse me, Friday night lights. We never really tried to make a show that was like crazy good. We didn't we, spend a lot of money on it either. We had a fun, enjoyable to watch high school band. Yes. I would, yeah. I would honestly say that if you got one of those ridiculous not not even ridiculous but just hardcore like boa type like high school bands that are like we're doing it they would look at us and call us bad so to speak oh for sure but yeah. we're not doing it for that you know what i'm saying yeah like we weren't nuanced to the level where we were thinking about um our marching technique to the fine point of some of us were yes but we only thought about step size we only thought about you know um the carriage, you know, yeah, how I would we say look posture. We weren't talking about, like, the technique of how to get a straight leg legit. I was about to say, I would say... We just had Extreme bad. basics. Yeah, very we're, much so. It's like... Very much so. We're going to power the basics all the time, every day. We're not going to go in further because all we need is the basics. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't in, like, a sense of, like, I don't want to teach the basics, but it was well, just it was like... like a, it was like we approached marching like a college band. Definitely. We, we, approached, call it, we approached marching like we didn't care about competitions, which is just how it was. Yeah, we were there for Friday Night Lights. We were here to support the football team, that kind of deal. Yeah, our, our, shows were, our shows were, like, a little bit harder, so to speak, and usually, like, competition bands, you know, like, they have the ballads and stuff, but, like, ours were crazy. Yeah, we just we just did all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. was just, we marched. That was all we did. We didn't do a lot of visuals. We didn't do a lot of features. It was just like, we didn't nah, do, you, just, you just play. Yeah, yeah, we didn't do a lot of, uh, I would say, in depth visuals because we did have quite a few of like they the, were like the, horn moves the little the little the little stuff but like like we didn't have choreography choreo. no we yeah. didn't have any of nah, that. none of that and okay so I say all this that's where I came from that's my past and getting to a world class drum corps there was a lot there was a huge learning curve literally from like a different world massive massive I'm now competing but not only that but I'm like competing on the NBA level like I'm world class international level the best and of the best yeah and i got i got to do that for the longest time i was not good i was just genuinely not good at what i did i didn't understand how to do drum core i didn't understand how to like live in drum core cuz like living's a whole nother thing that you got to learn the thing about you which i think i've mentioned on this podcast before the thing about you is like in that situation for like i would use me specifically but we've already talked about like music and marching is just it's not my passion. <laughs> yes. So me yes. is not comparable. Like a lot, a lot of people, a lot of normal people, nothing like bad about them or against them, so to speak. Uh, when they get there and they're, they're realizing they're learning a lot of stuff, instead of being like, wow, I should forget everything. I'm ignorant about this. Like I really am un uneducated. They would just be like, wow, they're different. My way is like better and blah, 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 blah. But like it just shows like the people who are in drum corps, the people who are actually there, the people that made it, yeah. that you got to have a different mindset. You got to have a different. You do. You have to be. Everything. My, um, we talk about this a lot, especially within my core. Um, we talk about performance and, and how the attitude and the mentality that you have to go into drum core with, mm -hmm. um, and then the one that you have to develop into these shows. Drum core is much more about performance, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of cores are getting rid of shakos, is so that we can perform with an extra like two feet of our body, which yeah. is our face, Your face. Um, that's getting covered up by a shako. Your and face so, is two feet long? <laughs> uh, eh, eh, maybe. I don't know. Um, but we, we talk about performance and what that actually means. And when we go into 
marching, especially on that world-class level, we talk about the balance that you need to have to succeed. Mm -hmm. And that is having a supreme, like, over-the-top, um, excuse me, I, I lost my train of thought. Supreme, extreme, like, over-the-top, um, wow, wow, I'm really blanking on this. Over-the-top. Oh, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, Te technique? Wow, look at me. This is fourth podcast and we're already we're already <laughs> I can't help. <laughs> we're at a we're at a stalemate. Here we go. Uh Mindset? not not arrogance. What is uh Mindset? Wow, I'm really messing this up. Extreme over the top. Confidence. Confidence. Excuse me. Wow. I couldn't remember confidence. Look at us go. You have to have an extreme amount of confidence in yourself and your ability and, and almost over the top, overzealous. But on the flip side, you have to have like extreme humility and be able to learn, be able to understand that you aren't everything. Like it's that fine line between overconfidence and arrogance. It's, it's, you're really riding that line of, um, of, of being a compassionate, like performer and knowing that you got the stuff and then not being arrogant and a jerk about it. You I, know? yeah, yeah. I definitely know from, and, uh, from personal experience. Yes. I personally in my high school year struggled with arrogance I think we all do. Yeah, but I Especially would say in that time frame. I would say, see, this in itself sounds arrogant. Wow, I would say I struggled with it. Like, <laughs> 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 I was a uh, you know first chair freshman year, uh, section leader freshman year, uh, for uh, playing first part. Uh, we only had like two first parts. Naturally, you got super good, super fast. Yeah, we yeah. only had like two first parts in our band, and I was playing first part in eighth grade as one of those two first parts. Yeah, so like. I, I did, and see, the thing is, my older brother was arrogant, and also the first chair before my older brother, uh, before, like, I was there, you know, like, I was in elementary school, he was, was super arrogant, and so, like, I had seen it, and in you my, just in my, that was the way to, no, 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 opposite, oh, okay. I, I myself thought, I personally thought that, like, uh, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna be arrogant, but I was extremely confident, and I was really good, and how fast, your confidence can turn to arrogance. Yes. And, and you and not even really realize. And that's why I'm saying it's a very fine line that a performer on that intensive quality. Definitely. Um, like, just that high performance that drum corps is, like, intense performance. It's a very fine line. Definitely. You really can, like, fall to the to the dark side, so to speak, like, really quickly. And you're right. You're totally right. Because, the, you know, they say, like, uh, like, acknowledging the problem is the first part of solving the yes. problem. Yeah. And it's like... I genuinely thought like I wasn't arrogant. Like I had saw people who were arrogant and I wasn't acting arrogant in the exact same ways. Yep. So like yep. I was like, I can't be arrogant. I'm just confident. I'm really good. I back up my confidence. Yeah. But it was just all excuses for being arrogant. That makes sense. And that makes sense. I, I know for a fact, like, um, so my first time in drum corps, I was very much the same way. I was like, I really got to understand who I'm with. I got to catch the vibe of all these people. I got to make sure that I'm, you know, I got to make sure that I'm 100. And Brandon Riley, shout out to him. He was my mellow buddy. Yeah, hey, what's up, Brandon? Yeah, he was my my dude. And so mellow buddies is just like you pair a vet with a rookie, and you kind of get them integrated before you actually start the season. So yeah. that they're comfortable with someone. They yeah, have yeah. someone to talk to. That kind of deal. I did that in high school. My, my yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So Brandon Riley, before I met him, and if you look at his Instagram page, he looks – uber arrogant yeah. he just has this like air about him we all know like you look at his instagram pictures and it's just like he's got that like suave like charismatic like look at me kind I, of face i look good yeah i bet yeah, he yeah. wears shorts I, <laughs> yeah. kind of short kind of kind of maybe too short but they're not yeah. too short because they he, look good on him. and he does that like uh he does that like tough boy like stance like the the this thing like you know like shoving the putting the traps up you he know wears, does he wear sunglasses regularly yeah oh yeah he's that guy yeah he he seems like that guy but and I'm, that's all i knew about I bet him. he's cool facts so the one thing that i didn't know about brandon riley is that i never knew the guy i just saw him from afar and when he was in rehearsals he looked that way because he had what um he was super focused and he had he had developed this over years of being in the core and when i was in rehearsal I had never seen people be that focused, and I thought they were mad. I thought they were pissed, or I legit just thought they were that arrogant. And that's that was my assumption and judgment of Brandon Riley, and it was way too soon, and I shouldn't have done it. And I got to know the guy, and he had really nailed 
that fine line of performance, and it's all the time. It's actually, it's actually crazy. Like <clears throat> you said, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you said, uh, you know, like seeing him super, super focused in rehearsal made you feel like he was arrogant yes. in itself. And yep. it's actually crazy how like I can remember thinking back in high school of like somebody who was taking rehearsal seriously that day, even if they didn't take it seriously every day, but that day for some reason they were. Whatever. Yeah. High school's weird. It's like I can remember thinking like, well, "Wow, look at that guy. He's trying way too hard." Yeah, and it's and crazy. Like, is that not what we should be wanting to do? Yep. You know? Yep. It, it's high school, man. High school's rough. Like, it, and I know there's a few high schoolers that are that are listening to this. Um, high school's odd because it is odd for the. It, it is a concealed and very uh, closed environment, and in, you grow up in this ideology that like. This is the only thing, mm-hmm. and if you're not in this thing, then you're not good. In in as far as like blue being coats, a person in drum corps, uh-huh. uh, it's like everybody on the field is there for one reason. Everybody has the same mindset. They didn't. Yeah, facts. They're there because they want to win. <laughs> to win to perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same yeah. mindset gen- generally. There are yes. some people want to win more. Some people want to perform more. Whatever. Uh, same goal though. Same goal. Um, best you could be. Uh. And the thing about high school is, is like, you have the kids who are there because they don't want to be in gym. Yep. You have the kids that are there because it's an easy class. Yep. You have the kids that are there, but they don't really like it. You have the kids that love it and they want to pursue it afterwards. Yep. You have the kids that have just been there since sixth grade, don't feel any type of way about it. <laughs> they're uh, just there. Yeah, you have the kids who genuinely don't want to be there, but their parents make them. Like, they're actual yep. people like that. So it's just, and then you have, like, all the different personalities. Because you notice, yeah. when you notice at lunch, you see band kids sitting together, but they're freaking everywhere. Because they they're are. just yeah. all different cliques, and they're all different personalities. And it's yep. like, yeah, we come together for one thing, but we're way different. Like, yeah. like have you seen um, – Our goal is not the same. Yes. Even though it should be. Yep. And, and well, actually, I was about to say, have you seen this, but you don't have uh, social media. I don't. There's, um, there's a lot of meme pages on Instagram, uh, and there's a lot of, like, marching band memes. Mm-hmm. And they, they have these, like, stereotypes of certain instruments – or certain groups and bands, or I've seen, of I've seen the some. band, yeah, 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 and they have this like expectation of what you're supposed to be if you play a certain instrument, or if you're a certain person, or like the idea that, um, depending on like the class that you're in, a freshman, a sophomore, a senior, you're supposed to like be something, and it, and it's not at all true. Like high school, people get ridiculed all the time for like dumb stuff, and that's just because like. Stuff. You're 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 growing. You're yeah. just like you're doing. You're trying to figure out what the world is, but you're stuck in this weird environment called school. And then you're you have pent up energy because you're like sitting at a desk for eight hours. They say it's weird. People say, and I've even heard. I believe I've heard you say it, that like high school and like that age could be and can be not for all people. Obviously, you're gonna have harder times, but it can be some of the hardest times mentally in your life. Yeah, and and not because well. It's mainly because that's your world. You're, and it, it's your, perspective. Yes. Your viewpoint is very, very much uh, closed. It's like, oh, God. I, this, is a whole, <laughs> this is a whole can of worms. We man. opened up a can of worms today, people. It's like I have been working since very young. Uh, yep. I've said on here before. Been there. I like to think I'm, I consider myself a hard worker, genuinely, on the th- in the things I care about. And we've made fun of that. <laughs> I do consider myself a hard worker. Um, and it's like I was working when I was 13. Not because I wanted extra money to spend at McDonald's, but because I had bills to pay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were they were bills that I, well, I guess I technically didn't have to pay them, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, like uh, like internet and stuff like that. Internet. You had a phone that you had yeah, to yeah. pay for. Yeah. And I, I'm not at all trying to say like I paid all my bills like I well, had no, no support. I, I know. What you're I'm just saying about. like I've I feel like I've worked hard, and the amount of anger. <laughs> that gets my last name, by the way. Hey. Uh, of anger that gets that flows through me when I tell an adult, either that I'm working with or that I'm talking to, it doesn't matter. I tell an adult, I'm like, yo, I'm feeling really stressed out like this week, or I've yeah. had a bad week, or I've been working really hard. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. And they're like, oh, you don't even know. Just wait. It gets worse. Yeah. I'm like, the fact that you're weighing your problems against my problems tells me that you just have no ability to view the world outside of anybody else's eyes but your own on top of the fact that like they don't know you as well as they think they do you should never no matter who you are quick no, judgment is dumb no no matter 
who the person is in front of you, no matter what they are complain- complaining or whining about. You should never weigh your problems to other people's problems on a scale. Because no, it's, the it's moment, a totally different life. The moment that you say, well, that guy is mad because his Lamborghini is in the shop and I don't have a car. It's like that guy worked for that Lamborghini. And if he didn't, he cared about it. So it's, who it's, are you? You have no idea who you're talking to. You no don't. idea. And you may think you do. But unless you've, like, been together for quite a long time, like, you don't. Yeah. And, and again, it ties back to drum corps. It ties back to band camp. Like, you have a lot of people. There's this, like, toxic mindset that I've marched more years than you, so I know more than you kind of deal. And in a way, they do. It's the same thing with age. Like, the fact that, like, yep. some people are, like, two years older, mm-hmm. and they're like, well, <laughs> you're like those, life. You're like those memes that are, like, Kids born in 1999. And then kids, yeah, born, kids in born in 2000. <laughs> so he's like a son to me. Practically <laughs> the same age as my kid. I've seen the exact same <laughs> thing. And, and really, it's like age means nothing. It truly is your experience. I've seen some immature six-year-olds. Yeah. Genuinely. And, and, and what's funny is that, like, I say this all the time, and I'm sure I've said this to you. Everyone pays a price for life. Everyone pays a price in life. And your struggle, you pay for it. But everyone pays in a different currency. Uh It's very different. Like, your struggle is not mine. I don't know your struggle. I've seen it a lot. We've been close together where I've seen that. I've never struggled that way. But you've also never struggled the way I have. Yeah, I hate that. Yep. I hate that so much. Like, I just have so many memories of, like, being at work and being like, dang, my feet hurt. And just even the customers. (laughs) Customers 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 that aren't, like, they don't even know me. They're like, just wait, buddy. Just wait. Yeah, it's like just wait till you're thirty, and it's like, eh, just wait till you're forty. So, or like when you're when you're like twenty years old, and like a twenty-two year old's like, hey, or like when a twenty-four year old and a twenty-six year old's like, hey, the people that graduate like, high school, mean? the people that graduate high school and then go to college, and in the first semester are looking at their senior friends from high school, yeah. and they're like, dude, and it's like it doesn't just wait, just and wait. And it's like again, I get it. There's a lot of experience. You have a so whole mad. year or more on me, but also. You don't know what I've gone through, yeah. you know? And, um, it, and every again, everyone pays a price. Yeah, they, It's just different. Back on the uh, back on the uh, high school can be mentally some of the hardest parts of your life. Uh, and that's not to say physically it can, but, you know, it's just usually not. Um, mentally, it could, like, really, like, high school has an effect on people. Yes. And people are, like, people say things like, oh, but high school doesn't matter. And things in high school don't matter. And your friends in high school don't matter. And who cares about what that boy thinks? But have you ever... And the fact of the matter is, is there everybody has that one thing, unless you don't, and you're weird. <laughs> you okay. ever have that one thing that you just care too much about it, and it's not technically like useless. Like for some people, it's video games. For some people, it's sports. Uh, and it's not useless, but it's like you really like it. You really yeah. like it a lot. Okay. And there are millions, if not billions, of people in the world that don't like, maybe even dislike that thing. Yeah. It's just not their thing? Yeah, it's just not their thing. Okay. But you care about it genuinely. Yeah. So, like, who am I? If I'm in high school and I'm crying over whatever, the way to give me advice or console me is not to tell me that what I'm crying about does not matter. Because, to me, it matters. Like, it, it's like talking to a five-year-old and trying to tell them that their broken toy isn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah. And it's like... They don't know that because yep. they don't have perspective. It is it's, it's the, worst the same thing way to them. And again, it goes on both sides. It's like when you are older, there's a lot that you know. You have chemical dumps in your brain. You have more hormones. There's there's things physically, but also if emotionally that you have gone through. Definitely, that a five year old doesn't know. Yeah, and there's a lot of perspective they that they need to gain. But mm-hmm. on the other side, you have to understand that a five year old, his world is this, or their world is this. I have. It go, again, going back to high school and high school ban, you don't know what these kids' struggle is. As a teacher, as a student, it's like you don't know what their home life is. And it, to compare is is just an ill judgment on yeah. your part. It's, it's like ignorant. Not even do you not know what their home life is. You don't know what they're thinking right now about what, yeah. You're, yeah, uh, facts. About what, about what you're saying. And it's like I just – I don't know. I, I try – and this is – this I do hate like the whole like – you like you don't even know and everything. This has been a very long thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But very recently, I would say in the past like six months, I've started a new like whenever I get in an argument with somebody or have a disagreement or any any kind of thing like that, um, like 
seeing the world or the problem and the or the viewpoint through their eyes through their spectrum it's a it's, it's called not empathy a, it's not an easy thing to do no it's not, not like at all. i could just be like oh yeah i can see where you come from every time because it's i'm hard. not you yeah facts and i have a lot an of interest, people forget that i have an interest in education as my career okay. and i feel like i'm going to have to be able to do that a lot yeah and you do it's facts. just like there there are some people i used to work at subway there's some people who when i take too long to go up there where when i put something on the sandwich that i misheard or whatever yep. that like they get mad. They do. They do. They get mad. And me personally, that would happen to play pro. You've been here all day. How many times? Like you don't do that often. It's whatever. Just take it off. You know, make me another one if that's what you want to do. I don't care. But to some people, they get mad. They do. And I just remember, and I remember doing this too. But I also remember like having a sort of realization one day, like when I would, after making that person's sandwich, go to other coworkers and other things like that. Like, did you hear that guy? Like, what the heck, man? Calm down. But it's like that man may have went to work for 12 hours, just got off, argued with his boss, whatever, whatever, whatever. Had a really bad day. Had a really bad day, and he was like, you know what? I'm going to get me some Subway. I haven't eaten out in six months, and I just want to go by myself without anybody and go get some Subway. And then that gets ruined, And then I screwed up his sandwich. And that's the cherry I was mad at him. Yep. That's just not right. It's It's just not right. It's a double-edged sword. It's a two-way street to, you know— Harp on social social workers, not what I was talking about. To harp on retail workers for uh, messing up or making a mistake, and you don't know what they've done that day consistently. Yeah, definitely um, two-way. I see what you're it saying. It is. And then to view the customer in the same way, it's the same deal. So to go about life thinking in that way that, again, everyone pays their price, to go into drum corps and feel the same way, no one knows – like, for example, again, going back to me being terrible at drum corps uh, <laughs> for the first year, I remember that there were two people, um, and I love them. They are great people. I, I really genuinely do, like, they're some of my favorite people in, in the drum world. corps? In drum corps. Okay. It, just in general, as people. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, like, did you meet these people in drum corps? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were um, part of my section. They had come from different parts of the country, and they were also super experienced. There was one guy who had marched another corps for three or four years, came to this one. There was another girl that uh, has been in this corps for quite a while, was a vet, and I was in between both of them. And I remember day after day after day, I messed up, and it was dumb stuff. Didn't put my horn up in time, or I cracked a note, or I didn't come in on time, or it was like, I just messed up. I messed up. And I remember there was a point where they got angry with me. And they got really upset with me. And a lot of that turned into, I'm just not going to talk about them. Or I'm not just going to talk to them. I'm going to avoid them. There's just, there's no reason for me to get angry. Um, and then there was a lot that, like, I could just feel coming in. You know? Like, I just, I wasn't as close to them as I thought I would be. Yeah. And. There's a tension in the air. Yes. You, you can almost, like, like, I know you know, I know you said you could feel it, but, like, I don't even know. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Everybody, have you ever, like, walked into the room and you see that one person? And it's just like a whole. And you it's like feel a, it. It's like a cloud. Yep. And it comes yep. over, and you're like. Whoo. And it Easier. was the same deal. So every time we were in the arc, every time we were together playing stuff, and I was I was just bad. I didn't know how to do things, and I remember there was a point where their whole mindset changed, and so did mine. And to look on both sides, excuse me, they are in this. They've been in it. They're veterans of drum corps. And to have someone in between them messing everything up day after day after day and not getting it, it it's angering. It's like, bro, I'm on this level, and you need to meet this standard because we're world class. And if you don't, you ruin it for me. You're ruining it for everybody. Yeah, yeah, And it's like one mistake. I literally paid to be here. Yeah. Not only did I pay, but I worked my ass off. Like, you don't know my struggle, but now I'm here, and you're messing it up yep. for everyone. You're Our goal is struggle. getting farther and farther away. But on the flip side, you don't know where I've come from. I'm that far away that you that that's not even on my radar. Half of the mess ups that I had, I wasn't even aware of because I just I my ears weren't there, my brain I wasn't even thinking on that minute level. I had an embouchure change like that was that was a struggle, dude, and like. I didn't know half of the terms they were using. I didn't even know how to function. And to me, that felt like I was like, Dan, 
like, why don't they like me? Like, this sucks. And I was like, I came in expecting a family. Yep. And, like, this is what they're giving me. Like, I like these people here. And I really love these people. But they're not even giving me the time of day. And, one, I was focused on me. I was being selfish. On top of their part, they were probably being selfish. I don't know. I haven't asked them. Um, but, like, halfway through the season, it started to click for me. But it also, I gave them the benefit of the doubt, even when I was messing up. And stuff got better. They were realizing it. They were seeing where I was coming from and vice versa. And that whole cloud, that tension broke away. Yep. And by the end of the season, they were like, dude, you're going to you're gonna get better. And not only that, but like you are going places. There are, there are, there's a place for you here. Aww. And like to hear that, I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> there's a place for <laughs> me. You know, it's actually, it's pretty funny. Uh, because you you talk about it all the time you're the you're the worst of the best. Uh, yep. You know, I can't, at least at I least can't, for that year. I can't tell you that you're wrong because I wasn't there. You know, yeah. all I heard was a show and you sounded pretty good. Like what's up? <laughs> <laughs> but I had a completely completely different experience. Like I was the the best of the worst. We weren't the worst, but I was I was. Yeah, you you were the flip side. I was really good in high school. Yeah, and like I, I'm. I'm not trying to gloat, okay? No, 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 I get you. Yeah, yeah, but I really did, like, I just had this natural, I didn't work hard for it. I I would say in sixth grade, I worked really hard. In seventh grade, I worked really hard. And that and just propelled you and, yeah, far it, away. Yeah. Like, I worked harder than anybody in sixth grade, for sure, because I just, like, it was like, this new thing, let's get good. Um, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it definitely shot me forward, and then I definitely, I dropped the ball for my freshman, sophomore, and junior year, 100%. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. I was still... Yeah, I was having a good time or whatever. I and get you. Yeah, yeah. So I was one of the better players in the band, definitely the best in my section. And I can I know several people uh, just like that were not as good as me, and yep. I was I was mean to them. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, we both were. Yeah. I was <laughs> I was mean to them, uh, in you know like ways that I wish you could take back and all that, and in these recent. These recent months of mine, like looking through other people's eyes, can can affect it. Yeah, it just changes your perspective on yep. a lot of different things, like a lot of different things. Agreed. Uh, back to fast food. Uh, like I worked in fast food, and before I worked in fast food, I had all these complaints, like, "Oh my god, it's taking so long." Oh my gosh. Yep. They messed up this. Yep. Oh my gosh. But it's like after doing it, it's like there are a million different things that they could be thinking about right now. Because I can think of a million different times where I went to work not happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Or just in general, you just didn't have the things that you needed to do or have the things that you needed, and they were out of your control. They yeah. weren't even your yeah, definitely. issue or definitely. your mistake. And it's just looking uh, looking through other people's eyes, changing your perspective, and uh, applying that to all of your life if you can, can not only change your life, but it can change a lot of other people's. Agreed. Because – Agreed. I don't know. I've never, I've never seen somebody when I worked in fast food like, when whenever something bad happens, apologize to like me like, yo, I'm sorry that that's happening like whatever. But like I make it like almost a point whenever I go through like a drive through or whatever, and something gets messed up or this or whatever happens, I'm like, yo, it's, you, it's all good. You just work yeah. here, homie. Like that's, that's you're fine. you're here yeah. to you're here to pay a pay rent probably, yep. and it's all chill. Like who am and, I? Again, if you apply that to life, like there's a lot of altercations. There's a lot of things that you could just th – that don't need to escalate. Um, honestly, like to finish out this point, um, one thing that really you need to work on, and I say you, you in general, everybody. Uh, everybody. We all need this. But just understanding perspective, having gratitude, and, and living your life with the idea that I don't know everything – but I'm confident in myself to move forward. And if I am one of those people where I, I am the one making the mistakes, how can I get better? Yeah. But also, how can I help other people do the same? Yeah. You it's, know? It's so cliche. but uh, It is. It is because – and why it's cliche is because it's that simple and it's that effective yep. that people forget it. Yeah. It's so cliche like, uh, you know, like pay it forward. Like, yep. Like do like doing to others as you would want done to you. Yep. It's, it's the golden rule of pre-K. Yeah, yeah. It's just like <laughs> – it's just like, I'm sure, in, in like my example, like fast food and whatnot. Yeah. I'm sure that me doing that has changed somebody's day 
at some point. Because it's changed yours. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. even if it hasn't, the fact that, like, uh, if I would have been rude, I would have left thinking, like, dang, I was pretty rude to that guy. Yep. Or I would have been mad, which is just a toxic emotion anyway. Yep. And it's like, I left thinking, like, I did what I could, and maybe yeah. they're happier. I hope they're happier. For sure. And For sure. it's just so much better than thinking, God, I hope they're freaking having a terrible day. And Plus. I hope they get fired. That's just so much worse. <laughs> like, it takes up too much energy to be angry. Facts. Plus, those small little things, like, again, we are creatures of habit and addiction. That is what humans are. And to slowly add that into your life, even if it's just small, that grows into something. Definitely. And so to start your day or to um, continue to to consciously think about being that person of gratitude and perspective and tolerance propels you into being that person in your life. It's a yeah. lifestyle change. It yeah. really is. Yeah, habits are everything, man. Facts. I, uh, I was talking to, I believe it was your sister, actually. Probably. Uh, shout out to Kim's sister. Facts. Which one? Mal? Uh, Mal. Yeah. Okay. And she was talking about how, how like, she, I'm sorry if I get the story wrong, Mal. Um, <laughs> she, something along the lines of had never, like, like, had a routine in the morning as, like, to make her bed. Yeah. And she talked about, this is a while ago, but she said that she had, like, just started, like, every morning, like, waking up and making her bed. Yep. And it just, like, brought a whole different, like, structure. Like, I, those small I woke up, and the first thing I did was not only productive, but it helped me, and I won't have to do it later, and it looks nice, and I feel good about it. Yeah. And that was the first thing you did in the morning. How yeah. to, that sets your day off better than I woke up, sat in bed, sat on my phone, felt terrible, got in the shower. <laughs> it's like the first thing I did when I woke up was not only productive, but it's, it was it yep. was helpful. It made and me feel good. And it's small, too. Yeah, tiny. Yeah. There's a good book. Uh, it's called Make Your Bed, and it's by uh, a super, like a four-star admiral in the Navy. Uh, great book. You should read it. Um, but yes, it totally, it, it gives to your point. Yeah. Exactly. Um, sorry, this was uh, a little deep, but hey, it's the fourth episode. You we come, can do what we want. You come here for advice. <laughs> what did I say, dude? We're the sandbag show. We can do whatever we want, people. Come on. All right. Well, hey, thank you, beautiful people for joining us. Uh, we really are super glad that you guys are liking the show and digging it. Um, I finally got that video of Amazon Alexa. This dude, uh, shout out to my niece's high school band friends. Uh, Alexa's on it, dude. You just type in, you just say, hey, Alexa, show the sandbag show. That thing's on it, bro. Plays my terrible voice on the get-go. I don't know. You can find us anywhere you find podcasts. YouTube for the video version if you want to see our bad faces and our terrible uh, hair. Um, and our Shaco. Facts. And, and our little sandbag boy. My, our little sand boy. Um... Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, we're everywhere. Facebook, anywhere. Instagram. That's not where you find podcasts, but... It's on the screen. Yeah. It's on, right, we're whatever. on there. Whatever. It's a fact. It's Just social. look us up. It's social. Click on the link. Facts. Uh, go to Instagram for maybe some more content. If you got some stuff for us, like I... We want our community to be active, so please send us some emails, send us some DMs, give us some feedback. We want it. You want to, like, comment on how terrible this podcast was? Like, put it in the comments, okay? Like, put it in there. Like, just type up, hey, this was really bad. You suck. Don't do podcasts again. Put that in there. Comment. Or be nice. This whole episode is about being nice. What's nah, up? man. Hey, tolerance for everybody but us. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, just dude, take it out on us. Review us. You could subscribe to us. Do what you feel like. But whatever you're going to do, um, do it everywhere. Do it everywhere. Um, thank you guys so much. This is a podcast for we had a good time, and uh, yeah, bye, bye.